not all archaeological discoveries are equal. Some are more worthy of our attention than others, and those are the ones that we keep our eyes out for on this channel. Whenever we see one, we make a note of it, add it to a collection, and then turn the collection into a fantastic video for your entertainment. Here's yet another collection of incredible archaeological finds, and we hope you enjoy it. The most macabre discoveries an archaeologist can make are human remains, but finding the remains of our ancestors is part of the job. Here's a recent discovery of that kind from northern Peru. Archaeologists have found the remains of 29 people at a pre-Inca site called Huaca Santa Rosa de Pucala. Upsettingly, they believe that all of the people buried here were either children or teenagers. They were sacrificed and then buried as offerings prior to the construction of a Wari culture temple more than 1,000 years ago. The remains of guinea pigs and camelids have been found during the same dig and might also be the result of sacrificial activity. This is the first time that solid evidence for the Wari culture practicing human sacrifice has ever been found, although it's long been suspected of them. Ceremonial weapons and large-scale ceramics surround the human burials, indicating that the ritual that ended with their sacrifice was a large and elaborate one. We still don't know much about the Wari, but the excavation project at this site is ongoing, so there may be more discoveries to be made here. In fact, our next discovery also concerns the Wari Empire. While they might have partaken in the bloodthirsty practice of human sacrifice, historians are increasingly convinced that the Wari weren't an especially violent or warlike people. In fact, they think that the existence of the empire led to an era of peace in Peru that lasted 500 years, and the peace was based on drinking beer. A 2019 study carried out at the Wari site of Cerro Bao, at the southernmost point of the Wari Empire, has concluded that drinking played a major role in the culture, and large-scale festivals were held regularly. The beer wouldn't have been much like the beverage we enjoy today. It was made from fermented pepperberries. The Wari called it chicha, and it would probably have tasted a little spicy. The practice of brewing the beer communally and then drinking it once it was ready created a sense of unity among the population. They even made flamboyant drinking vessels designed to look like Wari leaders and gods to drink the beer from. The study at Chero Bao has concluded that the brewery was so special to the people who lived here that the community burned it down and covered it with sand before they left, so nobody else would ever be able to use it. Millions of people all over the world believe in ghosts, despite the total lack of evidence to support their existence. Maybe you know someone who's seen a ghost, or perhaps you've even seen one yourself. Belief in ghosts is a shared human preoccupation that's been with us for a very long time, but the first known drawing of a ghost is captured on this 3,500-year-old Babylonian tablet. Not only does it show us what a ghost looks like, but it also tells us how to get rid of one. Apparently, the advice of priests at a time for people being haunted by a male ghost was to find a living woman for the ghost to fall in love with, after which it would leave you alone. The tablet is broken, and experts at the British Museum think that the missing half is the same size as the piece we have. Advice on how to get rid of female ghosts might have been listed on the missing piece. The ghost is shown as an old, bearded, angry man wearing a chain on the Babylonian image. That's a stereotype that's barely changed in thousands of years. World War II wasn't a great time to be living in the German city of Lübeck. Allied bomber planes visited the region almost every night, and the bombs they dropped wreaked havoc on the buildings and people below. Somehow, those same bombs also managed to create this so-called mummy cake. The cake hasn't really been mummified, of course, but it has been carbonized. The process would never have happened if it weren't for a bomb that landed on a cake shop in 1942. The bomb caused a firestorm and destroyed the shop, but the hazelnut cake survived because it was in the cellar of the building at the time. The fire was so intense that the building collapsed, but in doing so, it formed a cavity around the cake, which prevented the flames from reaching it and stopped it from being crushed. Instead, it effectively cooked the cake until it was black, preserving it so well that we can still see its swirls and frosting. 
Documents found beneath the cake say it was to be delivered to a confirmation ceremony the Sunday after the bombing happened. Sadly, we suspect the ceremony never happened. In 2013, archaeologists discovered the tomb of the Huarme Queen in Peru. She has that nickname because her remains were found inside El Castillo de Huarme. She was buried about 1,200 years ago and was probably a ruler of the Wari culture. Yes, that's right, we are back with the Wari. An examination of her remains confirmed that she was more than 60 years old when she died and must have been someone of great importance. The remains of 58 women were found inside the previously unopened tomb, four of whom were queens, but none of whom had burial goods as lavish as hers. She was surrounded by gold ear flares, ceremonial axes, silver goblets, golden weaving tools, and other items of jewelry. In 2017, Swedish archaeologist Oskar Nielsen completed a reconstruction of her appearance based on measurements taken from her skull. If his work was accurate, this is what she'd have looked like when she was alive. He says the model took 220 hours to complete from start to finish. We might not know much about the Wari, but it's possible that we now know what their most important queen looked like. Our next find is more of a story than a specific discovery, but it's an excuse to show you these terrifying hand-carved turnips, so we couldn't resist. Halloween tradition dictates that we carve faces or other shapes into pumpkins as part of our celebrations, but that's not the way things used to happen in Ireland. They used turnips instead, and then hung them outside their homes to ward off dark spirits. We don't know what it is about turnips, but they somehow look far more sinister than any pumpkin ever could. Turnip carving was linked to Samhain, a very ancient pagan festival that the modern tradition of Halloween is based on. The Museum of Ireland in County Mayo hosts one of the best preserved carved turnips, which has been preserved with plaster, so its pinched, angry-looking face will be here to scowl at viewers for many years to come. When turnips weren't available, people were known to use beets, radishes, and even potatoes instead. Pagans would also dress up in special costumes during Samhain, so that's another aspect of Halloween that was taken from something else. An apparent discovery that was made in Crete in 2002 might yet upset our understanding of human evolution. It's a controversial discovery, and the debate around it boils down to one question. The question is, were these footprints made by humans? If the answer to that question is yes, then the theory that human life originated in Africa goes out of the window. That's because of a 2021 study that concludes that the prints are definitely human in origin, and are more than six million years old. The starting point for human life must, therefore, have been somewhere in the Mediterranean. The most likely candidate for the biped that made these marks is an early human ancestor called Gracopithecus Freiburg. The new theory makes the footprints 2.5 million years older than those left by the common human ancestor known as Lucy in Tanzania. Unsurprisingly, the findings have proved to be hugely controversial among the scientific community. Debates about the accuracy of the research are likely to rage for some time, and more people will come here to examine the footprints themselves. This serves as a reminder that we still don't really know where we came from. During the Bronze Age and the Iron Age, elite members of many European societies loved nothing more than painted ostrich eggs. They were the Fabergé eggs of their time and were valued so highly that many a ruler chose to be buried with them when they went to their grave. Archaeologists have known this for a long time but have never fully understood how they came to be so valued or where the eggs came from in the first place. A team at the University of Bristol in England has spent the past two years trying to solve this 5,000-year-old mystery. By using electron microscopy, they've been able to determine that the eggs came exclusively from North Africa and the Eastern Mediterranean. They also think the eggs came from wild birds, despite the fact that some ostriches were kept in captivity at the time. The eggs of captive ostriches would have been smaller, whereas larger eggs carried more value and prestige. Why does any of this matter? Because painted ostrich eggs from this era made it to Northern Europe and as far east as China, that wouldn't be possible without an interconnected trade network, 
and so we're forced to conclude that the people and territories of the ancient world were far more aware of each other than we often imagine. In January 2018, the long-lost wreck of the steamboat Pulaski was discovered off the coast of North Carolina, USA. The ship had been missing since June 14, 1838. It's thought that the vessel's starboard boiler exploded without warning, dooming the ship instantly. The ship had a very wealthy group of passengers aboard at the time of the disaster and went down with cargo worth $150,000 in 1838. Adjusted for inflation, that's the equivalent of $4.5 million today. The lost valuables represent an incentive for divers to go to the wreck and try to retrieve some of them, which a group called Blue Water Ventures International has done several times since the site was identified. They've recovered more than 100 individual artifacts, but none more poignant than this British-made 18-karat gold watch. The watch stopped at 5 minutes past 11, just moments after the explosion happened and the Pulaski sank. You could make an argument that it belongs in a museum, but instead it was sent to auction in April 2020. After a competitive bidding process, the broken, water-damaged watch sold for a little over $15,000. Glassware is, by its very nature, very delicate. You don't expect glassware that's been buried for more than 1,500 years to have survived the passing of time in one piece. Once it inevitably breaks, you wouldn't necessarily expect every piece of it to still be there for archaeologists to find in the modern era. This incredible Roman vase, one of the best examples of Roman reticulated glassmaking that experts have ever seen, is a little different. It was broken when it was discovered in a necropolis in Autun, France in November 2020, but every piece was present, and experts have since been able to put the whole thing back together again. The vase turned up at the feet of an unknown person inside a sarcophagus. The necropolis is known to have been used between the 3rd and 5th centuries, so it's fair to assume that the vase comes from the same era. Reticulated glassware is the best example of how Romans mastered the art of working with glass. It's an incredibly sophisticated style, mixing interlaced lines with reliefs. Only 10 examples are known to have survived, of which this is the only one to be discovered in France. Putting a value on it is almost impossible. The piece is priceless. When is a scallop not a scallop? When it's used as a makeup case. It took scientists a long time to work out what the substance in this ancient scallop shell was, but they're now 100% convinced it's a kind of Roman makeup. The shell was found inside a first century grave in Merida, Spain in early 2020. This is the former capital of the Lusitania, and so is a place full of ancient Roman relics. When archaeologists opened the shell, they found it to be full of a pinkish-brown clump of powder. Over the next few months, the substance was subjected to X-ray diffraction, chromatographic analysis, and electron microscopy. The multiple processes revealed it to be made of a granite lacquer mixed with rose matter to give it its pink shade with the addition of an astringent compound used as a fixative agent. In plain and simple terms, it's a soft pink paste that would stick to your face if you applied it to your skin. The scallop shell was presumably chosen as a case because it's the right size, and if cleaned, is aesthetically pleasing. This wasn't even a new habit when the Roman owner of this case did it. The ancient Sumerians are known to have used mollusk shells as cosmetic containers 4,500 years ago. Norway is a great place to go skiing. People from all over the world visit the country for that very reason, but the locals have been skiing for well over 1,000 years. We know that because of the discovery of a 1,300-year-old wooden ski in the Norwegian ice in July 2021. It appears to be the companion ski to another that was found not far from here in the Diggervarden ice patch in 2014. It's made of the same wood and seems to have been cut at the same time, so it's reasonable to assume they're a pair. They now automatically become the oldest known pair of skis in world history. The ice has done such a good job of preserving the skis that they still have their original foot bindings, made from leather straps and wooden plugs. The footholder of the more recently discovered ski shows signs of having been repaired several times by its owner, 
which makes us wonder why it was abandoned in the ice. It wasn't broken, and it had clearly been a very useful possession for a long time. This part of Norway would have been good for reindeer hunting 1300 years ago, so that might explain why the owner of the skis was here, but not why he apparently left without his footwear. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!